Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 26, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Berlin, Germany. CoinHive, the company behind the crypto coin mining JavaScript, has had a setback in its quest to clean up and present itself as a more reputable company. In this latest incident, sometime late on Monday, CoinHive's Cloudflare account was compromised and requests for its popular cryptocurrency mining script were redirected to a modified version with a fixed side key, giving the owner of that particular side key exclusive credit for any cryptocurrency mined. The root cause of this issue was apparently a breach of Kickstarter. Kickstarter's username and password database was leaked a couple of years ago and CoinHive used the same username and password that they used for Kickstarter for its Cloudflare account, which then of course led to its compromise. So lesson learned here, do not use the same password on different sites. And of course, if possible, use two factor. And I think I have said similar words a few times before. And if you own a Dell PC, then you may be familiar with Dell's backup and recovery service. This is a service that you can use to restore your system to factory default. And essentially what it does is it does a backup a recovery disk for your operating system and pre-installed software. Well, uh, sadly, softthings.com, a company that operates the service for Dell apparently lost control of the domain Dell Backup and Recovery Cloud Storage.com. Now, if you have Dell's software installed, then it will periodically check that domain and potentially install updates from it. With losing control of the domain, a typo squatting company took it over and registered it and then apparently malware was later served from that domain. It isn't clear yet if any Dell customers were affected by this, whether any malware was actually installed on customer systems, but if you believe that you are affected, you may want to contact Dell about this. And apparently all that happened here was that SoftThings forgot to renew the domain, and so it was picked up by this type of squatting company just by registering it after SoftThings let it go. Now, the article by Brian Krebsia mentions a couple other cases where similar issues happened. If you do register a domain, if you do include that domain name in documentation or in software, then you pretty much have to be ready to hold on to it. And well, uh, typically it's not really all that expensive uh, to hold on to a domain for a few extra years. And we all know that uh, CAPTCHAs can be defeated, but one of the better and ever evolving implementations of a CAPTCHA is Google's reCAPTCHA. Now, because it is so popular, it is also a big target for CAPTCHA attacks. A new GitHub project, UnCAPTCHA, now released Python code that claims to be able to defeat the latest version of Google's reCAPTCHA with over 80% accuracy. Again, the attack relies on the audio file, not on solving the image capture. That has been a theme for many of the recent attacks. Audio files turn out to be typically to be easier to solve than these images. Now, the attack does rely on the use of cloud-based voice recognition services, including Google's own service in order to do the voice recognition. Of course, it helps in this case that the CAPTCHAs are spoken numbers. So one of the tricks they're playing here in the code is that they're looking for words that sound like numbers. So numbers are often recognized as words by these speech recognition engines. And these lists are then used to improve the accuracy of the final result by mapping words that sound like numbers back to the number they're likely representing. And in a 
blog post, Wesley Nealon did a real nice job in documenting a recent phishing attack targeting Ethereum users. In this particular attack, uh, Nealon was able to look at some of the source code behind the phishing site and also at some of the logs of this particular phishing attack. Not only did the attacker use a Unicode domain in order to make it look as close as possible to the targeted domain, myetherwallet.com, but the attacker was also able to make about $15,000 worth of cryptocurrencies within the two hours after the attack was deployed. This really just emphasizes a trend that we have seen before in that cryptocurrencies as they increase in value and popularity are becoming more and more a target just like traditional bank accounts and of course since many of these systems do not necessarily deploy the same safeguards as you find them in traditional banks they tend to be somewhat more vulnerable. Well, and with that, thanks again for listening. And again, if you happen to be in Berlin today on Thursday, I will be giving a talk about the Internet Storm Center and some of the Internet of Things, things we are working on tonight. So drop me a message if you're interested. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.